Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk productivity. Let's talk about being prolific as a creator. What I'd like to give to all of you today um, is eight keys to being a prolific creator, eight principles, if you will, that if you master them, uh, you will find yourself being highly productive and highly prolific in whatever your creative endeavors happen to be. Um, I can tell you that me as a person, I tend to have a reputation for being highly prolific. This is a feedback that I get a lot. I tend to write a lot of books. I come out with books uh, fairly regularly. I have an album coming out next month uh, that you can check out at zolonline.com. That's Z-U-L online.com. And um, I have all these sort of things going. I come out with YouTube videos. I write blog posts. And I don't know, people get very impressed by it. Me personally, I'm not that impressed by it because it's a product of sort of how I arrange my life and sort of trying to employ these eight keys. And at the same time, I'm not perfect at doing these eight things that I'm going to talk about. Um, at any given time, I'm failing at at least a few of them because I'm not a perfect person. But I know that if I can get all of these things working for me, um, that I'm going to be having a lot of output. I'm going to be putting a lot of things out there um, in the world and I'm going to be highly efficient is a, is a big thing. So um, let me give you a quick introduction to all of these. I might do some follow-up videos to sort of go in depth um, on each one of these eight keys to being a, a highly prolific uh, creative individual. So the first one is that you have to have a process that you stick to every single day. So keywords being processed, the other one being every single day. If you try to create a process that you stick to three times a week, you're going to forget to do it one day. You're going to let yourself slip one day. It's kind of like um, deciding that your fitness plan is going to be going to the gym three days a week. That never worked for me. I had to go every single day or it wasn't going to be like too, truly ingrained in my process. I wasn't engaging with the process every single day. So whatever you're working on, if you're a musician, you should be practicing every day, obviously. If you're a writer, you should be writing every day. And whatever you happen to be doing, if you're a businessman, you should be working on your business every single day. You should have something that you, some time that you set aside to do um, whatever you're going to do creatively, and you should do it every single day. That's the most important thing. Um, number two is uh, you have to order the priorities of your life properly. Um, and this is one that I tend to fail at a lot, and I think most of us tend to fail at. And by ordering the priorities of your life, I don't mean, well, your work needs to come first. Um, there's things that are more important to work that you have to make sure you take care of. One is your family and one is your health. If your body is failing you, your body will not be able to support you in doing the productivity um, part of it, in being prolific. Uh, you're going to be too tired. Um, your mind is not going to function well if your body is not well taken care of. Um, if you're sort of trying to sacrifice your family, uh, at the end of the day, the product is not going to deliver to you the satisfaction of your family. Um, you have to keep your priorities in order and be able to... Um, manage them properly. So to me, it's like family and health over work, over hobbies, over, you know, goofing off, right? So if you find yourself goofing off, you have to ask yourself, have I have I actually attended to all the priorities that are above this? Um, and generally, if you can remind yourself of that, you'll, you'll find ways to have all of those things. Uh, but most importantly, you won't be sacrificing the things that really matter to have something else that also matters. You'll be able to do things um, in the proper way. So number three, the third key is effective short-term goals. Not long-term goals, but short-term goals. A great example would be writing a thousand words a day. Um, if you are a musician, uh, a great um, example would be, I'm going to practice this um, this section today. Or what I used to do back when I was um, really building up my repertoire, I learned one piece per week. So my short-term goal was every week I learned a new classical guitar piece and I performed it the next week in a concert. So not only was I um, learning something new every week, and achieving a small goal, but then I was putting it into practice and making it part of my repertoire and testing it out with an audience every single week. So that meant in one year, I learned 50 pieces of music, uh, of, of like advanced guitar literature, really. Um, and I made sure that every single day I was doing the practice necessary, that at the end of that week, uh, I would basically, what I'd do is I'd schedule a concert for the next week. Like we'd had this student convocation thing. This is back when I was a grad student. And so I'd sign up for it with the piece that I intended to learn before I'd even learned it. And it forced me to figure out how to how to make that happen and be performable in a week. So effective short-term goals are great. A thousand words a day, you know, one piece a week. When I'm composing music, I, I try to do one piece a week. Um, back when I was a composition major, I did one piece per week and that always impressed people. Never let myself go more than one week on a piece because then I'm just sort of letting myself go. I'm not 
I'm not moving forward. And you always want to have that forward momentum. Effective short-term goals are going to make that happen. And you could apply that basically to anything as well. Number four is the growth mindset, um, which I haven't talked that much about. Growth mindset is that you are um, always improving what you're doing. You're always adding new skills to what you're doing. You're always challenging yourself. So, and I give you the example of, you know, I would schedule the concert and then I would, I would do that. It's like, I'm growing. I'm making myself grow every single day. Uh, it's part of ABG, always be growing. Um, it's kind of the law of life, uh, in this natural world. If you are not growing, you are decaying. So it's better to be growing than decaying. Um, if you're resting on your laurels and you're not challenging yourself, you may end up finding yourself too bored to continue <laughs> and you never want to do that. So you got to have the growth mindset. There's always something you can do better and you should always be trying to do something something uh, better each time. And this partly comes into play with what I'll talk about in the last point, the eighth key um, to being highly productive or being a prolific creator, um, is that if you are not able to engage and self-criticize and self-reflect and work that into the improvement of the next product, then you're really selling yourself short. Um, you need to be doing that and having that growth mindset so that you're always excited to be improving what you're doing and you're focusing on the right things to improve. Um, number five is to have the professional mindset rather than the amateur mindset to contrast with the amateur mindset. Professional mindset is that I do this. This is what I do. It's like someone's like, I'm an aspiring writer. I hate the word aspiring. You're not an aspiring writer. You're either a writer or you're just, I don't know what you're doing. So if you're not a writer, then you're not a writer. There is no aspiring. There's no aspiring musician. Either you're a musician or you're not. Uh, and that's the mindset that you have to have so that you are doing what you're doing and you combine that with the growth mindset. It's okay to be growing and be what you're doing. It's okay to be a writer who's also getting better. Um, but the important part about the professional mindset is that you're going to be doing what you want to do what you care about right now. You're working on the thing that matters to you right now. You're not doing etudes that you don't intend to perform so that you get good enough maybe one day to do the music you want to do. You're working on the music that you want to do right now. You're writing the book you want to write right now. Um, that is something that's really important for the, your, your, your soul refreshing what you're doing so that you always feel motivated to get up every day, that you're doing something that matters. You're not sort of spinning your wheels hoping one day You'll be good enough. Um, so you got to have the professional mindset. You got to be achieving something right now, not achieving something in some vague future. Um, number six, this is the one that I feel most people fail on because uh, you may be listening uh, to this and being like, yeah, you know, I, I have these things, you know, I, I try to do this every day. Um, but the sixth one is what I call winning battles, that you win a war by winning battles. And every day, Every week, every so often, there's going to be a battle for your attention, for your time, for your patience, for your willingness to continue what you're doing. And if you are not willing to fight and win those battles, you will never achieve victory. That's sort of the analogy. So if you imagine that you have a short-term goal, it's like, I'm going to learn one piece a week. And um, you, man, you're just really tired on Friday. You had a hard hard week of work or is a hard week of school you had a big test on Friday and you're like ah you know I don't I don't really need to work on that you know I'll go out and party um, or I'm so tired I can't stay up and practice I can't I can't do this practice thing tonight I've, I've got to just go to sleep um, the people who do that often find that at the end time when it's time to collect the product when it's time to sort of gather the fruits of your labor the fruits are rotten the fruits aren't there the fruits haven't grown because you haven't put in the effort to tend them. A farmer has to, and it's like maybe I, maybe you call this the farmer mindset. A farm, there's no day off at the farm, right? If a, if a cow is in labor, that cow must give birth. And if there's problems with that, you must help that cow. And it doesn't matter that you have a headache, right? It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Um, if, if it's the day that you that's part of your scheduling that you have to you have to spray your crops, uh, with some, you know, with something specific on that day and you choose not to do it that day because you're feeling tired, you choose not to battle, um, or you're sick, you choose not to battle through that, then the pests eat your crop and you've destroyed everything you've worked for. Uh, but it's no different really in sort of being creative is that 
Um, if you if you allow yourself to go to sleep early instead of finishing what you set out to do, then you'll never you'll never finish what you're doing. And I know it said it's important to to tend to your health, but there's a lot of times where you know you you just need to stay up a little bit longer. You just need to focus a little bit harder. You just need to try and just micro that that little thousand words out at the end of the night, even though you're feeling bad. Um, and you need to do it because if you are not willing to do it when it's hard, then you're going to allow yourself more and more slack to not uh, not be able to accomplish those little small term goals. Um, so basically, they you know if you feel like oh, I'm too stressed out, I'm going to play a game, and you haven't tended to your process, that's when you're going to realize that you're not being successful at what you wanted to do, and that's going to be very discouraging. So you have to fight those little battles. You have to do it even when you don't feel like doing it. That's the difference between a professional and just some guy who's experimenting. Is that the professional gets up and does it no matter what, right? You gotta have, maybe I'll call it the farmer mindset. Um, but you gotta win the battles to win the war. Uh, the seventh one, seventh key is to avoid perfectionism. Um, nothing that you do will ever be perfect. Um, you should accept this in life and you should do your best to complete anything you're doing within a reasonable time frame and move on to the next project, whatever it may be, knowing that you can't perfect anything. And the thing is, perfection is a is a is not a good thing. Perfectionism, and it's a it's a double bad thing, is what it ends up being. Because not only are you delaying the completion of your project, the completion of what you're trying to bring into the world, not only you're putting that off in just like the future. And it if it if it exists in the future, it doesn't exist now. It's basically worthless. It doesn't exist. Um, not only does your thing not exist now, but you're going to be avoiding the very, very important cycle of completion, reflection, receiving criticism from others, uh, looking at the product that you've made and understanding where you made mistakes and where you didn't. So when you go to revise that product or you go to make, make the next one, you know what to do the next time around to make it better. If you're never completing a project, you will never get that critical feedback. And I've encountered so many writers that never finished their first book because they're like, well, it's not, it's not very good. It's like, well, you need to finish it. You need to figure out why it wasn't very good. And the next book you write, you know what to avoid and you know how to do it better and you improve your process. Um, if you never finish it, then you're never going to really see why it's not working until you've like completed your project and get in front of someone and, and really gotten some feedback on it. And especially with writing books is that um, the challenging thing once you get you know past the a basic level is not writing pretty prose. Um, you can sit down and write pretty prose all day if you have enough practice at it. Uh, pretty prose is not that hard um, with a little bit of practice. It's one of the first things that comes is writing good prose. The hard thing is things like pacing, things like plot structure, thing, all the things that go into making a complete work good. Um, if you go pick up like a Harry Potter novel, the prose is not good. And it's not that it's bad, it's just really functional. What makes the, the, the stories connect with people is the, the characters and the plot um, and the setting. Those things that uh, I talk about constantly with Storycraft, that's what people uh, really connect with. And if you're, if you're trying to be perfect with everything, you're never going to, to have this cycle working for you so that you can actually create something good. So it's really important to avoid perfectionism. Uh, you're selling yourself short and you're just gonna have a non-existent product. A non-existent product is worthless to anyone. Um, the final and last key, and one of the most important, is you need to be consuming, you need to be analyzing, you need to be reflecting, and you need to be able to consider criticism. The main thing is you gotta consume other people's art and you have to analyze other people's art. That's a lot of what I do on this channel. I provide movie analysis, literary analysis. Analysis is so important. Music analysis. Because if you're not able to see what's happening, if you're not taking the time to think about how something works and think about the art and, and just receive lots of art, read lots of books, watch lots of movies, uh, play lots of games, whatever art you're looking to, you know, read lots of comic books, it, whatever art you're looking to consume, if you're not having a lot of it in front of your face and figuring out how it's working and how it's working for you, then you're never going to have the tools necessary to actually do that yourself. So it's really, really important to consume. If you're a writer, you need to be reading books. If you're a screenwriter, you need to be watching movies. 
you know, if you're a musician, you need to be listening to a lot of music. Um, and you need to not just be listening to it passively and seeing if it affects you, but you need to be actively listening to it and hearing what's going on. You need to be actively watching the movie and seeing what's being done well and what's not being done well so that you can understand what you can do uh, better or uh, how you can achieve the same quality that's there. Um, it's really important. And, and I did mention consider criticism. Criticism is somebody telling you what didn't work for them. It doesn't mean that like what you did sucks. It just means, hmm. So some people may not like this. So I got, I'm, I'm happy to say like all of my two and one star reviews on my books are from people who haven't read the book, um, which is an interesting thing, but it still says something. So one is just, you know, somebody's randomly leaves one star reviews on everything. The other one, it's like I, they read the first two pages and then gave it two stars. It's like, so you didn't read the book to mean it's not, you know, it's not like a, you didn't actually read enough book of the book to give me criticism. There was like one or two details that the person didn't like from the beginning. Um, so I look at that and I'm like, okay, so some people don't like this sort of presentation at the beginning of a book. Let me think about, is that something that I want to avoid in the future? Or is that something that's like, that's the, a minority of people and i I need to have, and it's okay to do what I did. So you have to do that critical self-reflection and think about what that sort of thing actually means and sort of remove your ego from it and not let yourself like have a damaged personal, um, personal feeling because somebody didn't like something you did. That's maybe that's the ninth key is, is, uh, wear armor, <laughs> wear, wear the armor of the ego. So those are the eight keys for, uh, being highly prolific, um, and I hope you will find them useful. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see and uh, what you want to hear in the future because I do want to deliver it for you. And uh, good luck and happy production.